So it looks like we finally got a in-depth review and some gameplay footage, about 15 to 20 minutes of gameplay footage of the brand new Transformers Battleground video game available for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC digital download. Now, a lot of us were wondering what is the story with this game? What is the gameplay? What is the mechanics? Who's gonna be in it? All we knew from that short trailer we got was it was the Cyberverse continuity and it looked like it was some kind of top-down game. That's all we knew. Now that we have a better perspective of it, we've learned that this game is actually a turn-based strategy RPG kind of game, and the whole hook by the company is essentially that you are the commander of the Autobots and controlling them in this turn-based strategy war, essentially. So the game was developed by Coatsync and published by Outright Games a company that's known mostly for licensed material. And the vibe that I get from this game is that this is essentially, again, a smaller title um, for a more younger skewed audience. Pretty much a, a my first turn-based strategy RPG kind of vibe I get uh, in simplicity. I was told that uh, it could be set to have a harder setting, but it's more just putting up the... Uh, the difficulty on the individual characters that you're fighting against, but otherwise it's a very simple kind of uh, turn-based strategy RPG. It's not the first one even for the Transformers continuity or the Transformers brand because uh, way back in 2008 there was an old cell phone game called the Transformers Generation 1 Awakening game uh, done by Glue Studios, which was like the very first Transformers uh, real-time turn-based strategy, but that was more like... If anyone played uh, Shining Force back in the day on the Sega Genesis, or probably a better example would be like, uh, well, it's more like Shining Force than it is Fire Emblem, but it's definitely that same kind of vibe where it's, you have a 2D platform, the characters move around, and then when they engage, it engages a little bit of a cinematic, you know, fight against the two characters, and same thing with Fire Emblem, it's similar to that. This one is more similar to that of Final Fantasy Tactics where you really have one game engine and one game style and they just play within that sandbox. So the characters move around on a 2D on a 3D plane, excuse me, and when they engage in battle, they just engage in battle in that same plane. The camera doesn't shift. Uh, it doesn't uh, go into like let's say a more FMV kind of environment to show the battle of those two characters they just kind of clash right there in that same angle uh that's not to say that the graphics are bad i mean they're 100 percent cyberverse looking so it's like it's almost like something that could have been done in the show but that's more just the aesthetic of cyberverse to begin with that with the cell shaded kind of 3d environment as same thing with the sound uh, they got all the voice actors from the show, so hey, props to that. It, this reminds me a lot of uh, when Animated had a video game for the for the Nintendo DS, where they got all the voice actors, and they just did this. It's like, hey, it's animated. If it was Interplay's Lost Vikings, Lost Vikings was an old Interplay Super Nintendo game, which was like a puzzle solver. They literally took the Lost Vikings game and made it a Transformers game with the animated license. And it's kind of the same thing here, where they took just a very simple kind of turn-based RPG system and slapped the Cyberverse license on it. Again, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I'm just saying that don't expect like deep, you know, crazy replay value and insane online multiplayer kind of community from something like this. It's your small pick up and play kind of game. Uh, it's from what it seems like there's only going to be an Autobot campaign where you're going to just be playing as the Autobots with their individual characters and completing a story through this real time strategy thing. There is a Decepticon, a way to play as the Decepticons, but it's in the arcade mode, which probably is something where you just kind of pit one team against another and like any real-time strategy you just close in on each other and destroy each other essentially I'm, I don't know if you could probably set other kind of goals and stuff you know defend this fortress or whatever from what I could see from also from the uh, 
from the footage, it looks like how it's going to work is when your character is finished doing his movement of his turn, the the direction that they're facing will be their most optimal uh, blocking armor, so that if they're attacked by other sides, they take more damage. You can see there's a shield there. And so far, it looks like the characters that are available from this demo of the first two levels of the Autobots, uh, they also have their own unique special abilities and stuff whether it be Flight or Grimlock being able to crash through uh, smaller environments and stuff like that. The characters available are Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Grimlock, Wheeljack, RC, and Windblade. And they all have their strengths and weaknesses and abilities and all kinds of stuff like that. So I appreciate that. Again, it looks like it's going to be a fun game. Don't get me wrong. It looks like it's going to be a fun game. But at the same time, don't expect, you know, crazy AAA stuff. It's the same way how... Everyone loved Transformers Animated. And when that Nintendo DS game came out, it came out, people picked it up. You know, Nintendo DS especially at the time had a huge install base of, of people at the time in the gaming community. Uh, people picked it up, they played it. It was a fun game. It was a fun game. It had the voice actors. You know, we got to play a little story. And then we got on with our lives. And I think it's going to be one of those more. It's not going to be one of those Transformer games that... You know, like a War for Cybertron or for Fall of Cybertron that have a deep community and could keep being played years after you've played it. You know, replay value is king. Um, it's something more that's just, hey, you like Cyberverse? We're gonna give you a little, a little story here, a little real time strategy. Not too difficult. You know, pick up and play. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, if it's not your thing, then it's not your thing. For some people, turn based strategies are are kind of slow. I know me personally, I, I like real-time strategies, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm someone that's a little more open to different kind of genres of video games. Some people just really want a Transformer shooter. You know, they really want that. Or if they, they want, like, a real-time strategy game, something like a, a, a StarCraft or, or WarCraft or something like that, they might something want along those lines where it's a little more fast-paced, where turn-based strategies like this game here, they could be a little slow. They could be a little slow... And uh, judging from the footage, because it's also, you know, clomping around robots, it could be perceived as a little slow. Uh, but I guess, you know, to pad out the slowness is the excitement of the characters interacting. There's a lot of, you know, again, having the voice actors and having a story in the Transformers bubble will probably help this game a lot in terms of its interest and how people will receive it. The way that I look at it, if you're a Transformer fan who really loved the Cyberverse series... Um, there's something here for you here. If you're someone that isn't a fan of um, turn-based strategy, it might be a little bit of a slog for you. But at the same time, uh, you know, having the voice actors, having an ongoing story, having Starscream being his star screaming -ist, and Optimus Prime being as, you know, monotone and boring <laughs> and optimus -y as possible, uh, you could uh, find something of it. They say here that you could assemble your team and roll out, but considering that there's only six uh, characters to choose from, I don't know what that's going to entail in terms of customization or leveling up the characters in the long run. That's something we'll probably learn when there's more than just two levels of a demo to play, but it will be interesting to see when uh, more of this is available. Again, this is going to be available October 23rd. PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC Digital. Judging by how the graphics are, again, I the graphics are as good as they could be for the aesthetic that it needs to be, which is Cyberverse, but it's also something that I feel that a high-end cell phone could have also been sporting, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe at some point, uh, I guess the publisher here, Outright Games, will make a cell phone edition of it because it, it looks like something that I've seen on a lot of cell phone games already from the turn-based strategy because cell phone games are practically due to the fact by how controls are with cell phone games they're practically designed for turn-based strategy stuff so this is something uh, you know it, it feels like a cell phone game and that, I don't want to give that as an insult but it's it's almost feels like it was designed to be that um, but it is again simple game easy for kids, uh, has a little bit of a difficulty spike if needed for adults to make it harder, but it's an artificial difficulty, just pretty much update, uh, upping the stats of the villains that you're fighting against, and you having to be a little more, what's the word I'm looking for, strategic uh, to beat them, but otherwise, again, it should be interesting, I know I'll pick it up when it comes out, the full version, 
and play it. It looks very cool. Uh, but I never, I never miss a Transformer game. Always interested in playing a little bit of the lore of our beloved robots. And uh, yeah, so that's more or less it. So now we have pretty much a good idea and the characters we could play as. And uh, if you're a Decepticon lover, um, at least you'll have that arcade mode that you could kind of create your own situations with the Decepticons and fight the Autobots there and their own individual abilities. From what it seems like of the Decepticons, uh, it's obviously Megatron, Starscream, Shockwave. Uh, we've seen Soundwave. We've seen uh, Slipstream. We've seen some of the other Rainmakers. I believe also Shadow Striker was seen in the trailer. So I don't, I can't confirm if those characters will be playable in the Decepticon side. But judging by how the the engine is, if those characters do have character models and are you know, something that you could fight against, it's probably the flip side of the coin that could also be used because, it, you know, it's just a matter of simple programming. It's not like it's something you have to tie to a whole new form of uh, controls or stuff. It's a turn-based strategy, so it's a lot more simple. But again, I'm intrigued. I'm interested. Um, again, and I accept that this isn't uh, going to be a triple-A game like we've gotten in the past from Activision and uh, High Moon Studios. I accept that this is more of a licensed game, and it's a fun little romp in a different kind of gameplay style that we've, again, only been really familiar with uh, from that of the old uh, G1 cell phone awakening days in 2008, more than 10 years ago, when it's kind of crazy when you think about it. And that game isn't available anymore. So if you're into Final Fantasy Tactics, if you're into, you know, uh, uh, Fire Emblem and that, those kind of games, it might be your jam. It might be your jam. This might be your kind of thing. So definitely check it out. Again, Transformers Battlegrounds, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Digital PC, October 23rd, 2020. Something to play, something to enjoy, and something to have fun with.